the Reserve Bank. This week it will again consider interest rates at a crucial time for our economy. For some time, the Governor, Philip Lowe, has talked about the narrow path our economy is on. Too many rate rises and it slips into recession. Too few and inflation persists, leading to higher interest rates for longer and most likely higher unemployment. And you can see the pressure of higher interest rates already with the collapse of another two home building companies in the past week, the biggest being Porter Davis, with 4,500 potential home buyers left in the lurch. Low and the Reserve Bank Board have opted to try and land their economy softly without recession from this path. But Lowe has previously considered that this approach comes with risk. One of those risks emerged this week with the ACTU calling for a 7% wage rise for 2.7 million workers on award wages. The government on Friday said the Fair Work Commission should raise rates commensurate with inflation, which is currently running at 6.8%. But some, including the Australian industry group, say such wage increases will tip our economy into recession. Nobody's going to go into that commission and say there shouldn't be a pay increase, but a time when we think, we, are, we believe that it, the inflation sort of tiger is sort of being caged again, to then sort of throw more red meat to it is a very silly thing to do. It's sort of bordering on insanity, quite frankly. So all of that puts pressure on the Reserve Bank and its board to keep up the fight against inflation by maybe raising interest rates down the track. There's just another dynamic in all this. The Treasurer on Friday received the review into the Reserve Bank, which he's promised to release by the time of the federal budget in May. That's the next time our federal parliament will sit. Now, this review has looked at the relevance of the RBA board, its rate-setting powers, the culture of the Reserve Bank, and whether inflation is indeed the best measure for determining rate moves. So let's bring in here Peter Chulop, former economist with the Reserve Bank, who's previously been critical of the way our central bank operates and sets rates, also chief economist with the Centre for Independent Studies. Peter, thanks for your time. What's in the review? <laughs> um, can I start by saying what I think is not in the review? Of course Because I, I think that's more interesting. I don't think there will be a recommendation to change the inflation target of 2 to 3%. Do you think there should be? I think that... The reason there's not going to be a recommendation on that is that that's a really secondary issue, that there's broad support for that. There are tweaks that can be made to it and there are some people who disagree with it. But the big problem facing the Reserve Bank is that the bank hasn't actually been willing or able to meet that target. That's the point, because even in the last little while, the Reserve Bank has changed its forecast for inflation. It's raised its forecast for inflation and given itself more time to get back in its target zone. For, for eight years, it was below the target zone and did nothing about it. So you sit there and say it's OK to have a target, but if you never meet the target, what's the use of it? Exactly. And so whereas other central bank reviews have tended to focus very clearly on the specification of the target, this review of our central bank is much more interested in questions of governance and how to actually make a central bank or give it the power to actually hit the, whatever target it's been given. It's a bit pointless changing a target if the bank is never going to admit it. One thing it. about it is the board and whether the board has yeah. the incentive to try and get the interest rates, you know, high enough to defeat the inflation to get it back to that target. If they're all business leaders and you're controlled by one person, the Reserve Bank Governor, who really comes in and says, this is my recommendation, you get no context of the argument or the debate inside that Reserve Bank board, then ultimately everybody else is left guessing. That's exactly right, Ross. And in the Reserve Bank's submission, or not submission, but it, its contribution to the review, it noted that over the past 10 years, the board has agreed with every single recommendation that the governor has made. But that's it. not how a board works. I've been on boards. There's not always a consensus. And as a result, sometimes the board actually has to have a vote to decide what it will do. And if you have independent experts applying scrutiny, you will get a difference of opinion it does seem that there's been a lack of deliberation and a lack of scrutiny. OK, so with the Federal Reserve in the United States, there are different um, people on the Monetary Policy Committee who will go out and speak separately. Now, they may have, might have a different view to what the Federal Reserve has done. Somehow, it seems as though if there's no consensus in Australia, there's panic, there's a worry, as distinct from having a debate so that people genuinely understand all of the issues that contribute to the decision about interest rates. That's exactly right. I mean, the... 
there's a perception at the RBA that if an expression of differences means a cacophony, that, people, that the bank doesn't know what it's thinking. But in practice, the only way you get a development of thought that you learn from your mistakes is if people can criticise what's been done in the past and make suggestions, possibly unpopular, as to what, where the bank should be going in the future. But that comes down to the skill of communication. Yeah. And it would be fair to say that we have said on this program, the Governor of the Reserve Bank, we think does a great job of communication. We think that, the, uh, that, that Jerome Powell at the Federal Reserve does a great job of communicating, and others around him as well. Here, because there's been mixed messages come out, there's changes in forecasts, there's promises that interest rates aren't going to move. They're not promises, but they sort of look like promises. You know, this, this is where the confusion becomes really set in, and yet interest rate policy should be pretty straightforward for people to understand. Oh, I'm not sure. I mean, so where there's disagreement, there always will be a bit of confusion and uncertainty, but I think that's appropriate. It, you don't want to pretend that all the issues are settled and clear when, in fact, there is substantial disagreement as to where it should go. But there's so, one agreement, isn't there, here, and that is you can't go back to a situation where politicians set interest rates because politicians will do the politically expedient and popular thing, i.e. not put interest rates up, and that's why you still, and I think everybody would agree, need a vigorously independent Reserve Bank board. The, yes, but the independence needs to be constrained. It should be the responsibility of our elected representatives to set the goals of the central bank, such as 2 to 3% inflation and, may, and the United States, you mentioned, they also target full employment. Um, they shouldn't be decided by unappointed bureaucrats, unelected bureaucrats. They should be appointed, decided by our elected representatives. But once you've got the objectives settled by a democratic process, it's then a technical question. And you want technical experts... Uh, sorry, it's a technical question. How do you achieve that objective? And you want experts making that decision, is, is a separate Is a separate monetary policy committee and, a sep and then a separate board, so distinctly different organisations or groups that decide interest rates versus actually run the Reserve Bank. Is that a smart decision? That's the way that Central Bank is going, that... Overseas, the Bank of England most clearly, um, the Bank of Canada, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, though there are debates as to that, they're all moving towards that kind of model where you have a, sep a monetary policy committee composed of monetary policy experts deciding on interest rates, but then all the other broader questions that a central bank has to deal with can be decided by another board. OK, just a quick one for you. As we go through this whole process... Does Philip Lowe get reappointed for another term beyond September? What's your gut feel? I think that's looking unlikely. They say that the report is very substantial, 300 pages, 51 recommendations. That's 51, implicitly 51 suggestions for change from what Phil Lowe was doing. Um, he's probably not the person to put through those big changes. I'll tell you, it's going to be fascinating to watch it. We will see with interest between now and the federal budget, probably in April sometime, when the Treasurer does hand down his response to this report. Peter Tulip, great to have you on the program today. My pleasure, Ross.